Hello, welcome back. And as promised, I am today going to talk about the five finalists for the 2024 Canada Reads competition. Canada Reads is a live debate where there are five books chosen from a big long list. Advocates for each of these five books debate a round table for four days and the merits of the book and why this one book should be the one book that Canada reads. The theme is usually a book that will change you, a book that will transform your way of thinking, a book that will transport you. This is the 23rd anniversary of Canada Reads and I have been participating as a, a reader since 2007. When I was teaching junior high, I used to do uh, grade seven reads, my version of Canada Reads, and the kids loved it. It was always such a good time because they loved talking books. And even those who were perhaps reluctant readers, they would get fired up and, and we'd have our debate style and what's the one book that all grade sevens should read. If you haven't watched my video for my reading journal, go and have a look. And while you're looking, you might as well like it. <laughs> I have my reading journal for 2024 set up with the Canada Reads and it was super easy to decide my top three, but not what order they should be. I have my handy dandy little cute clipboard with some notes. This is not in any particular order. The first book we're talking about is called The Future by Catherine Leroux. It is translated from the French by Susan Uriou. Catherine Leroux is a writer and translator based in Montreal and Heather O'Neill is the champion for this book. And Heather O'Neill is the author of, actually she was one of the first winners in Canada Reads for her debut novel, Lullabies for Little Criminals. And she also is the author of The Lonely Hearts Hotel, which I've read many times. Awesome writer. And this is what she says about the future. You're going to meet a group of feral, murderous children whose meditations on life are so gorgeous and absurd, they are poetry. And you know what? I 100% agree. The future is a an alternative history of Detroit, where the French didn't surrender Detroit to the United States back in the 1700s. The residents there deal with pollution and abandoned neighborhoods and poverty and the long-term impacts of systemic racism. And this book has won an award for speculative fiction. I flagged so much in this book. I'm using my CBC retro, retro CBC mug because it is Canada Reads. These children are under the age of 12, living in a forest outside of town where they find themselves creating a community. And one lad is, is so angry and hurt and sad. And he says he longed to set fire to time. What disappears with the passing of a friend? And then there's a... <laughs> very funny scene where some of the girls are trying to figure out something and these two women are asking them questions and the kids say I don't know we're you're the women you know you should know so beautiful book my initial response at the end of it uh, was oh I'm not crying you're crying oh golly gorgeous you're right inside these children's minds and the way this woman describes the areas just amazing the play, here's an example of place and the sensory. The place still has a sickly dampness to it, even though the sisters have gotten over the ailment that saw them isolated from others so soon after their arrival. It's dark inside, the shutters are closed, and the girls seem not to want to waste any candles, or maybe their matches have taken on the damp, or perhaps they like the dark. Who knows where those two taciturn adolescents are concerned? Their bodies face each other in the half-light, bent over a game of checkers. But with the sound of the door, the youngest turns to the two visitors, her coppery face framed by a starburst of hair. The eldest, tall with hunched shoulders, sinks further into her chair. The next one that I read was Shut Up, You're Pretty. This is a compilation of short stories centered on Loli. I wrote some notes so that I wouldn't forget. 
She's a black Congolese immigrant to Toronto, and this is a coming of age story. So she's about 12 or 13 when she arrives in Toronto. They are, quote, disarming and punchy stories, was on the 2019 Writers' Trust shortlist, and won the Edmund White Award for Debut Fiction. It's by Taya Muntanji. She says that she didn't want to write separate stories with separate leading characters. So although the stories can be standalone, they are connected by the uh, focus on Loli. It is championed by Kudagwashe Rutendo. She's an actor from Toronto. And she says, within the book is the promise of hope and future, not in spite of heavy past, but because of it. This one, I have to say, was the most difficult for me to read. It, not because I'm not a fan of heavy topics, but because oftentimes I found myself lost in time and place. I wasn't entirely sure where we were on the timeline in the story. And there's some really harsh experiences that Loli goes through and witnesses. One of the most moving stories though is the one called Down the Lake Shore where she is just enjoying her experience as a kid for the day. Worth reading definitely. It actually won a couple of other awards too. The Trillium Award in Toronto and the Publishing Award for the... This is the Publishing House's debut novel. The next one that I read, and this is an interesting bit because it's maybe one of the first times a romance has been included in the final Canada Reads. This one is called Meet Me at the Lake. It tells the story of 32-year-old Fern who keeps thinking about this perfect day that she spent in Toronto 10 years earlier. In her 20s, she spent this perfect day with a guy named Will Baxter, who is an artist painting a mural in the cafe that uh, Fern works at. And they had this perfect day, and at the end of the day, they agree to meet at her mother's lakeside resort in Muskoka a year later to meet at the lake. And he doesn't show up until he does, and that's all I'm going to say. My favorite part of this book was The Perfect Day. It was quite an enjoyable read. Oh, and this is by Carly Fortune and made me laugh at some times, made me cry at some other times. But really the best part for me was the perfect day in Toronto. Just magic. So I can see why Fern is still thinking about it 20 years later, right? It is championed by Miriam Enjo. And she writes, it inspires and empowers us to reflect on our own lives and values to see how choices we make bring us closer to our happy ending. Fun read. The next one I have on my list is Bad Cree by Jessica Johns. And this is the story of Mackenzie, a young woman who's living in, in Vancouver. She's from Northern Alberta. And, quote, she is haunted by terrifying nightmares. And they are. The lines between her dream life and her real life are blurred. And she needs some help. And these dreams have been particularly vivid and terrifying since the death of her sister Sabrina a year before. The Bad Cree by Jessica Johns, championed by Dallas Sunius. And Dallas Sunius is a former Canadian national men's volleyball player. He's Cree Anishinaabe from Saskatoon. He's a contributor to CBC Sports. And he says, I felt like I had a shorthand with the characters and the author. Any book that leaves me sobbing, laughing, talking out loud while I'm finishing it, this book will take you to deep, dark, scary places and beautiful light places. Memorable places, the bar scene where they go for karaoke, you can almost smell the stale beer and hear the crunchy peanut shells on the floor. This is her debut novel. Wow, wow, whatever else she writes, I am going to be running to Pages, my local bookstore, and, and getting whatever it is that she writes. Absolutely stunning. Sense of time and place, characters, heart, light, dark, very profoundly moving, this book. Oh my gosh, I wish I could tell you the scene 
where no I can't because it's a spoiler but maybe after you've read it we can talk about that scene with with the grandmother actually the author of shut up you're pretty wrote on the back a blurb here reading this book is like getting lost inside of a cloud I suggest reading this alongside a friend or a sibling or an auntie it's surreal dreamy unraveling delight you'll want to hug about yes absolutely and I did I I read these five books with my sister in Ottawa and that was always fun. Okay, so the last book, and again, I'm showing these in no particular order. This one is called Denison Avenue and it's set in Toronto's Chinatown and Kensington Market. And it is a quote, moving portrait of a city undergoing mass gentrification. It's the story of a Chinese elder who is experiencing existential challenges after her husband dies. Wang Cho Sum, she goes for long walks in the neighborhood. She meets people. She's in her 70s. And it's about grief. It's about home. It's about a community connection, discovering family, that people that become like her family. And the, the way that Christina... Uh, Wong takes us through the neighborhoods and the old shops in Chinatown that are no longer there. Any place in Canada that you visit, you can relate because even in the, my little neighborhood here in Calgary, there are some shops that have disappeared, secondhand bookstores, all kinds of really neat quirky shops that no longer are here, but there's a lot of bars, there's a lot of coffee shops, uh, new glass and steel condos that are going in. The other remarkable thing about this book, which is championed, by the way, by Nahed Nenshi, former mayor of Calgary, he won the Mayor of the World Award in 2014. He says, it will change you. It will change how you look at people on the bus and on the streets. It will change how you live your life. And what's really, 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 really cool about this book, oh yeah, I already said that I would tell you two things. First thing is that all of the words that Mrs. Wong speaks are in a disappearing Chinese dialect. And then the English translation is in brackets. And then the other thing, see I've flagged quite a bit here as well. The other bit is if you flip it over, the illustrations by Daniel Innes are incredible. And I didn't notice this until I was about a quarter of the way through. And my sister said, did you notice that the top pictures are the old and the bottom pictures are the new? And we know that because in all of the bottom pictures, we see a little glimpse of Mrs. Wong pulling her shopping cart with bottles. And we see the old stores at the top how it was and then the boarded up stores down at the bottom and Mrs. Wong walking along. Beautiful. The theme, grief, home, community, connection. And I think that's what ties all of these books together. Like there's grief, there's dreams, there's hope, there's frustration, there's family, there's family loss, there is exploration. There is people trying to find out who they are, redefine themselves. Fern is trying to figure out what she wants to do with her life. She always said that, no, she didn't want to go and take over her mother's resort. She wanted to live in the city. She was a city girl. And so it's her conflict with that. Jessica John's Bad Cree, same thing, needed to get away from the small town Alberta and go to the city. But that connection is still there. Right? A new immigrant to Canada living in this massive city where there are so many people and what are the rules? How do I fit in? Where do I belong? Right, And that's definitely in the future, all these children are asking themselves the same thing. Where do I belong? Do I belong with my feral companions in the forest? I don't belong with the adults. It's not safe with the adults or you know, who can we trust? And another community that has disappeared or not disappeared but has is somehow disintegrating before their eyes but at the same time there's hope because there are some good people that are still and the same thing with this the the loss the death of her husband and how she has to reinvent how she lives and how she supports herself and the people that she meets and all of the things that her husband had previously taken care of now she has to 
And also along with the disappearing neighborhood and the gentrification is her language is also disappearing. So there's so many, so many good things for all of these books. And so you can take a minute now and go click the like button and then I will tell you my ranking. So in fifth place, I put Shut Up Your Pretty. In fourth place, Meet Me at the Lake. In third place, Denison Avenue. In second place, The Future. And my prediction, my ranking, first place, I have Bad Cree by Jessica Johns. So there you go. I will be back next week with either a daily summary or a midweek summary or an end recap <laughs> of the debates that start March 4th, 2024. And I'm so looking forward to it. I love it. I love it. And so I hope that you seek out these books. And if possible, you can get them through your independent uh, bookstores. You can borrow them through the library. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for stopping by and see ya.